In this video, I'm going to show you how to use rational equations to solve what I call dirt problems. Or another way you'll see them uh, listed in books is called motion problems. But basically, it's just distance is equal to rate times time. And you can use rational equations and all the logic that you use with those to solve these problems. And, and here's an example, kind of a famous example, I think, of these type of problems. You hear comedians joke about these all the time. So a train leaves Sacramento, traveling to New York at 60 miles an hour. So it's going you know, from Sacramento to New York. Two hours later, a second train leaves on a parallel track, also traveling to New York, but it's going 80 miles an hour. And how far from Sacramento will the trains be, Sacramento, will the trains be when the second train catches up to the first? Okay. So how could we solve that using rational equations? Well, let me show you how to do this. I always set up these kind of problems in what I call my dirt box. Kind of a little play on words there. But basically, it's just a box like this with one, two, three, four, five, six different boxes. And up here, you're going to put D is equal to R times T. And that's where you get D E R T. And that's why I call it the dirt or motion problems. And all these problems fit this form. Okay? Now in this first set of boxes uh, horizontally, you're going to put the train, you're going to put the two different actors in the problem. And this one is train number one. Okay? And uh, in this next box down here, you're going to put train number two. Now what you want to do is fill in the logical information as much as, as you can in each one of these boxes. Okay. Now here's the second point that's really important. Two of these boxes have to be equal. In other words, the distance has to be equal or the rates have to be equal or the time has to be equal or you can't solve these problems. Alright, so you have to find out which one of these two sets of boxes are equal, or there's no way to connect up the two different trains. Okay, there's got to be some kind of commonality in order for you to solve these problems. So let's read this particular problem and let's see which one of those is equal. So a train leaves Sacramento traveling to New York at 60 miles per hour. That's a rate. That's train number one. Let's put 60 right there. Two hours later, a second train leaves on a parallel track, also traveling to New York, but it's going 80 miles an hour. So let's put 80 there. Now, the other thing that they were talking about, you might notice, is the hours. Two hours later, a second train leaves. Now, do we know when train one left? We don't. So let's call that X. We just don't know when that was. Two hours later, train two leaves. Now you might be tempted to put in x minus two, right? Or x plus two because it's two hours more later on. And that would be incorrect. You'd actually have to put in x minus two. Now why is that? Well, even though it leaves like two hours later, it's traveling a lot faster, so it's catching up to train number one. It's taking two hours less time, and that's why you're going to subtract uh, two from the x. Okay? Now, what does this leave us in terms of equal? Which one of these two sets of boxes is equal? Uh, and it would be the distance, isn't it? And that kind of makes some sense from the problem itself, too. Train number one is catching train number two, so they've actually traveled the exact same amount of distance. So, now let's go ahead and see what we can do with this information. Well, what we know is that train 1, the distance, we'll call that train 1, is equal to rate times time. So that's equal to 60 times x. Now train 2, the distance for train 2, is also equal to rate times time. And that's 80 times x minus 2. So we've got two sets of equations here, right? But what else do we know? 
We also know that the distances are equal. So in other words, this should be equal to this. Now let's put that down here. 60x should be equal to 80 times x minus 2. Okay, and now let's just go ahead and solve that. I'm going to get 60x is equal to 80 times x times 160. Let's subtract. You're going to get negative 20x is equal to negative 160. And now let's divide by negative 20. x is equal to negative 160 divided by 20, which is equal to a positive 8. Now let's take that and put it back into our problem and interpret what we've done, right? Basically what this is saying, it will take train 1 8 hours and take train 2 6 hours before it catches up. And that's the final answer. Now I hope that helped. And these are examples of using rational equations in distance rate time problems. I'll go ahead and do another example for you where there might be some fractions in here that makes it a little bit simpler for you.